In the deep sea, gelatinous organisms can take many strange forms. Recently, there's been a wave of interest in images of an animal with a bag-like body covered by a mesh pattern and without noticeable tentacles. This is not a ghost or trash. It is the Siphomedusa deep staria. It was named after the submersible deep star, from which it was first observed intact in 1966. This large and fragile species can't be collected effectively with nets, but has been seen on 29 dives in the last 20 years using the submersibles of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. Surprisingly, according to traditional taxonomy and to genetic studies by Keith Bea and colleagues, one of Deep Staria's closest relatives is one of the most commonly seen medusae, the moon jelly Aurelia arita, which is on display in aquariums around the world. Although its morphology seems odd, Deep Staria's adaptations of extreme size, mesh-like digestive system, and a lack of tentacles are actually typical of several other deep sea species in the same family, the Olmeridae. Stygiomedusa, for example, has a large thick bell and curtain-like oral arms. Tiburonia, named after the ROV Tiburon by George Matsumoto and colleagues, has a massive beach ball-like bell, but stubby finger-shaped oral arms. Stella Medusa ventana, named after another ROV, was nicknamed Bumpy by Kevin Raskoff and others for the warty appearance of its surface. These warts are also present in many of the other Olmerids, and they give a clue as to how these medusa can survive without tentacles. In many cases, the bumps are concentrations of stinging cells, which cover the surface and inside of the jelly. Anything touching or landing on the bell gets stung. Deep Staria has another adaptation. It can pull the opening of its bell closed like a kitchen trash bag to trap things inside. A few other deep sea jellies use the same trick to catch things without tentacles. The net-like mesh running through its bell is another indication of how deep staria and other olmerids survive. The pattern is not a nerve net, but it is a network of interconnected canals which connect back to the stomach. By achieving a large size, the medusa maximizes its ability to entrap prey, and using a branch digestive system lets it distribute nutrients and energy through and across masses of jelly. One of the most interesting things about deep staria is a close association with a marine isopod, a relative of the pill bugs you might find in your garden, except that these grow to seven centimeters or almost three inches in length. We call these isopods in the genus Aneuropus the pilots of the medusae. There almost always seems to be one crawling around inside of the bell and they haven't been found on other species of jellies. The isopod was originally found in trawls of the Challenger expedition in the late 1800s and its association with deep staria was first reported back in 1969. Like most crustacean parasites of jellyfish, Aneuropus probably damages the jelly, but it can't be too aggressive or it would eat itself out of a hiding place. It's important to point out that in other videos, the jelly looks like it's pulsing, undulating, and contorting itself inside out. This is entirely caused by the activity of the submersible. Subs use several propellers to shoot water, pushing the vehicle around. As a result, the water around it is usually swirling in all directions. Unless you approach with extreme care, jellies will start to undulate and twirl. Naturally, deep staria hangs motionless and makes slight and subtle undulations of the body. This is Steve Haddock of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. If you see any other unidentifiable blobs, be sure to let us know at jellywatch.org.